hey, have you ever dove into your own comment section or maybe your favorite influencer's comment section and realized that a lot of the responses in their comments are either templated or they lack context or there's no responses at all. It's particularly common with people who like make content that says like DM me book below and I'll send you the book. And then, you know, some people say book, some people don't, some people just leave a normal comment. Everybody gets a response. It's kind of annoying. It's kind of a turn off for your audience. And there's many technologies out there like Go High Level and ManyChat that allow you to automate comment responses. Uh, but what I want to show you here today is how to incorporate a little bit of intelligence to those comment responses. And I want you, I want to show you how to use AI to sort of contextualize the response, uh, but not only contextualize your response to determine what the commenter is actually trying to do. And in this scenario, we're going to use three different categories and then we're going to respond appropriately and maybe even send them a direct message if it is appropriate. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Justin. I like to create content, tutorial based content uh, based on problems that I solve in my business. I run a company called Lead Brain. We're a digital marketing agency for home service businesses. And as I solve some of these problems that I see to help my, my clients be more efficient, I'd like to share it with you because uh, I spend a ton of time trying to fix this stuff. So one of the ways that this problem illuminated itself in my business is that I was running ads for home service companies and I started to realize that all not all leads come in the same way. So we might be asking them to fill out a Facebook lead form or go to a landing page or maybe even send us a message in, in Messenger, but not every lead interacts the same way. What I started to notice is a lot of leads were leaving comments and some of it was just purely a compliment, like, wow, that looks like good work. But some of it was, can I get a free quote? Or how much per square foot? These are people that were interested, i.e. leads in the service, but my clients were doing a terrible job at responding to them because the same reason why they hired me for digital marketing and automations is the same reason why they weren't responding to those comments in a timely manner, which equaled missed opportunity. So what would happen is, is they would respond hours later and by that point, the person had lost interest. They would respond and they, they wouldn't respond appropriately, like provoking a question or a conversation. They wouldn't direct message them. They wouldn't like their comment, all these things. And I couldn't expect my clients to do it, so I had to automate it. And when I first started down this route, I noticed that go high level had the uh, comment trigger and the problem was that you weren't able to sort of contextualize it not every comment was a lead some of it was just a compliment and we wanted to respond to that because that's an opportunity to show you know genuine business sense I think it helps when you have positive comments in the comment section even if it's just an ad and so I wanted to contextualize that I wanted to be, build a system that could read the comment make a determination, categorize that comment, and then respond appropriately or even send messages. So we're going to dive into doing that. Uh, we're going to use Go High Level. We're going to use their open AI function. And I, I'm going to have a series of, of predetermined prompts. And if you want access to those prompts and you don't want to reinvent the wheel or you don't want to just you know type, you can copy and paste. I'll share this document. There's a link below. Uh, just fill out the link below and I'll email you this, this document. I don't have a wazoo you know, email sequence. I don't have something to upsell you. So just fill that out. I'll send it to you automatically. It's easier for me and then hopefully it's easier for you. And you can modify the prompt so that it's, it works for you and your application and your business. So let's dive right into it. So what we're going to do is we're going to come right in here to go high level. So let's go ahead and start from scratch. And we are going to name this the comment bot. First thing we're going to do is we're going to add a new trigger. And in this trigger section, let's search for comment. And this works for Facebook and Instagram. Uh, we're going to go ahead and choose Facebook comments for this example. And we're going to say the page is Lead Brain, my page. And the post is, uh, yeah, let's just use this. Let's preview this on Facebook just so that we make sure this, yeah. So this is just a random comment that I selected, a, a automated review post that we have here. So we'll use that as an example and we'll save that trigger. As a matter of fact, we're gonna turn this part on, the track first level comments only. So what that will do is make sure that like if somebody initially comments and this then this workflow is triggered, but if there's like a comment thread, you know, all the comments that are, you know, sub that first level are not going to trigger this, this response. We only really care about the first response. So we'll save that. And then the next thing we're going to do is we are going to use the OpenAI GPT function. And, and here what we're looking to do is we're looking to read the, we want AI to read the comment. We want it to and contextualize the comment. And then we're just going to put it in three categories. And for this example, we're just going to use three categories, but you can use as many as you'd like. Uh, I'm going to ask that AI tell me whether it's a comment, like it's a compliment where we can respond with an appropriate response, 
or if it's an inquiry in our services where we can direct message them or we can also respond with with an appropriate response or if it's just like spam or if it's aggressive just ignore it and we'll let the business owner deal with it so i have a pre-made prompt in here that i'm going to copy from my other screen forgive me while i do this and i'll, I'll sort of review this with you as well so in here, uh, I, I, this is a very simple prompt. Again, I'll include this in the doc, the Google Doc, but classify the following Facebook comment uh, into one of these three categories. And we'll say category one is a general compliment, and then we give it some examples. Uh, I like to organize this, it doesn't paste really well, but category two is an inquiry about our services, and we give it a few examples. And category three, is irrelevant right so or negative we don't want the bot responding to negative comments we'll let the owner deal with that themselves maybe they want to hide the comment or they want to respond appropriately and then we just give it the, the comment and then in here we have this variable where i pulled out of here and it's just this comment body we're just going to put that comment in there and pass it to chat gpt and then we give it some additional instructions like carefully read the entire comment. If the comment is both a compliment and an inquiry about services, classify it as an inquiry category two. Regardless of the compliment, respond with the category number one, two, or three. So we're giving very specific in instructions to ChatGPT to respond with only one, two, or three. And if somebody says, wow, nice work, how much for you know per square foot? That was a compliment plus an inquiry. We want to prioritize the inquiry, right? And you may have to tweak this for, for your own application. And one last thing we do here is I do enable history because we're going to run another chat GPT function. And maybe this is required. Maybe it's not. You can test your own application. But I want to enable history because I want the next GPT function to be able to have the historical context of this categorization and the comment itself. So we'll go ahead and save that. And the next thing we need to do is we need to split out the workflow into branches because we asked GPT to give us a response of one, two, or three, right? So we're going to create a conditional statement. If you come in here and search for if else, and then we are going to say category We'll call this one and then we want to look for GPT and we are gonna is one so this is for category one we're gonna duplicate this branch and we're gonna call this two two and we're gonna duplicate this branch and we're gonna call this three we're going to change this three. Now, if you were afraid that ChatGPT wasn't going to respond precisely with uh, one of the three categories, you can say contains uh, one, two, or three and be just fine, but both should work. So here we are. We have our three branches, and now we just need to determine what we want to do based on those branches, right? I'm going to do one thing because I like to uh, stay, stay organized here. So let's rename this to uh, comment analysis is we're gonna to refer to it here in a second. All right, so let's build out the first the first category. So the first category, if it's just a compliment, if it's just a compliment, all we want the AI to do is like that comment and then maybe just respond with a genuine response to that comment. So um, let me look at my reference notes here and we are gonna create another GPT function. All right, and then we are gonna prompt this. Here's what we're going to say. Formulate an appropriate response to the following comment, and then we're going to provide it with a comment that's in a variable right there. If you forgot how to get that comment, if you click on this little tag, click on Facebook, and then you have the comment body. And then we're going to give it some additional instructions. This comment response should be no more than 30 words in length. It should appear sincere and personalized, and your response should only include the comment response and no other information. So what I'm trying to prevent here is if you've ever messed with ChatGPT and you say, hey, write me an email. It says, here's your email template, and then it provides the email template. Uh, I just want it to respond with the content that we're going to include inside of the comment section. So. Uh, we don't need to enable history here because this is sort of the last GPT workflow inside of this uh, or action inside this workflow. So we're going to save that. And then the next thing we're going to do is we are going to search here for comment and we're going to say reply and comments. And we're going to go and the reply is going to be if you click on this little tag and scroll down to GPT. You see this number two. See here, here's where I like to be specific, and I and I messed up here, and I wasn't. So I'm actually gonna I'm gonna punch myself here, and I'm gonna come in here and rename this to comment response. Save that, and now we are gonna reply in comments, and then we're gonna search for GPT's 
comment response, and then the response. So now, whatever ChatGPT returns, we're gonna reply in comments, and then I like to like the comment. Uh, so we'll like their comment and respond. Remember, it's a compliment, or at least it should be if our prompt's doing its job. So we're gonna save that, and then we're done with number one. That's all I wanted to do at that point. If somebody just says, says, says hey, nice work, then I'm just gonna say thank you, and I'm gonna like their comment. So the second one is probably the most important one. Here's where all the missed opportunities gonna happen. If they're inquiring about our services, I wanna do a few things. I wanna determine that it's acquiring, in, inquiring about our service. I want to reply in a DM, which is really powerful, because when I reply in a DM, I'm trying to initiate a conversation. And at that point, I use Closebot to have a full conversation and ask for name, phone number, email, address, and callback time to create a lead out of that comment, which is extremely powerful. So I'm gonna send them a message, and then I'm gonna send them a comment telling them I sent them a message so that they get notified on different fronts. Um, and then we go from there. So let's go ahead and create another GPT. And we're gonna name this uh, message reply. And I have a prompt here on my other screen. Again, these prompts are gonna be included in the help doc, which you can download for free. Uh, link will be down in the comments. So let's see, you're a helpful assistant who crafts a friendly response to inquiries about service. A Facebook comment was left by a user showing interest in our service. Create a polite, engaging response that verifies their interest and lets them know that we'd be happy to help them and encourages them to check their inbox for follow-up messages. Make sure that the response feels friendly and supportive. Uh, and note that the response is going to be sent directly as a message and not a comp and not a comment reply. Uh, ensure that the response. So this is a little confusing. I'm actually reading this myself, and um, when I was doing testing, I, I kind of made some changes. But it's kind of it, it's confusing. If I was a bot, I'd be like, "Am I give, giving a message or am I giving it a comment?" So we're going to go ahead and edit this uh, on, on, on here. So we're going to say a Facebook comment was left by our service. Create a polite and engaging response that verifies their interest. Let's them know we'd be happy to help and encourage them to check their inbox for follow-up messages. I'm gonna remove that part because that sounds like we're leaving them a comment. All right, make sure the response feels friendly and supportive. Note that the response is gonna be sent as a direct message and not a comment reply. Ensure you return the response and no other information. Make sure the response always ends in a question. So that's really important. When you send the first message, you don't just wanna send a message with just like a statement. You want to encourage or provoke a conversation. So we're always gonna end it with a question. And yeah, we gave it the context of the, of the comment body. So we're gonna go ahead and save that. And then we are going to search for interactive here. Facebook Interactive Messenger. So this is really powerful because if somebody leaves a comment, Facebook allows you to send them a message and there's like some like, you know, window or whatever, but since we're doing this automatically, this is gonna happen in a matter of seconds. And so we're gonna be able to actually send them that direct message. And then once they send us a message back, we're gonna have Closebot pick it up. Uh, and this video is not about Closebot. I do have another video uh, in here that I'll probably link somewhere that'll show you how to create a conversational AI bot. But for here, we're just focused on the, the comment bot. And to be clear, nothing we're doing here requires Closebot or any external service. If you're using of go high level you can do this today all right so we're going to go ahead and reply to the comment via dm and our response is just going to be if we click on this little tag here go to gpt go to message reply it is going to be the chat gpt response and that's it we're going to save that so that's going to send them a dm with the chat gpt response but the last thing i want to do is I want to reply in the comments and just let them know that I sent them a DM, right? So we're gonna go ahead and search for comment, reply in comments, we'll go ahead and like their comment, and then we can come in here and just say, sent you a message with a smiley face, and if we wanted to create some variety in this sort of message, we can add additional responses, like check your DMs, uh, just shot you a message. And this is so that it can sort of randomize that response. And if you actually wanted to take it to the next level and you wanted it to truly be unique, you can create another chat GPT uh, workflow action, have it come up with a, with a comment response that was unique to that specific context of the conversation and then re reply. But we're not gonna overdo it here. Like I, like I said, you can create your own sort of version of this in your application. So. We'll go ahead and save that. And then for three, we're just not gonna do anything. If it's a spam or if it's uh, you know irrelevant, we're just gonna leave it alone. We'll let the business owner take, uh, take charge of that. So let's go ahead and publish this and save it. And let's test it, let's see if it works. So I have the, uh, the, the comment here, so this is exciting. Let's see, um, 
good job. This is just a comment that I left that's just a compliment, so the AI should categorize that as category one and just respond with an appropriate comment, and it should not send me a direct message. So let's see if that works. Um, let's see, let's refresh this. Look at that, that happened automatically. So uh, I didn't pause the video or anything, it was really fast. Thank you so much, your support means a lot to me. I'm glad you appreciated my efforts and it liked it. See that, pretty cool. So we're gonna go ahead and delete this comment and say, wow, what services do you provide? Right, this is inquiring in the comment section about our services and so I should get a comment response and I should get a DM now. So let's see what happens. Not gonna pause the video because I want you to see how long it takes for this to actually occur. So still no response, boom, and I just got a response, right? So that was maybe 15 seconds and it says, hello, thank you so much for reaching out, even included an emoji. You might, if you don't want emojis, you can probably go in there in the prompt and tell it not to use emojis. Uh, and let's see what it said. Thank you so much for reaching out and showing interest in our service. We offer a variety of options tailored to meet your needs. We'd love, or uh, we'd be delighted to share more details with you. Could you let us know what specific services you're interested in and what you're looking for? So it ended in a question. It followed our, 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 um, it followed our, our, our instructions. Now, if we wanted to tell it more about our business, maybe in that prompt you would include some information about your business, maybe a website, scrape, or, or whatever it is, but extremely powerful. Now, one thing's missing, uh, the comment. I don't see a comment, so I'm gonna go ahead and refresh this, and let's see if it actually left me a comment, because it should've, which is interesting. Okay. So I'm gonna come in here to execution log so we can troubleshoot and see where we are at. Looks like it did respond with a comment. And let's see what the comment was. It was supposed to be sent. Maybe we just, oh, there it is, it just popped up. So sent you a message with a smiley face. So. That's it, that's how you do it. Uh, I think this is really powerful. It's quite a simple workflow. It doesn't require you, require you to subscribe to a, you know, a bunch of different services. You can just use organic GHL stuff. If you run ads for people, you run ads for yourself, or maybe you're an influencer and you have a lot of comments or a lot, an active comment section, I think that this can be extremely powerful and extremely helpful for you to, uh, to capitalize on, on some opportunity that would otherwise be missed. So thank you for, for coming, like, share, subscribe. If you, um, if you have any questions, please reach out in the comments. And if you wanna download this help, I will include the help doc. I will include all these prompts in there uh, and just send it to you automatically. Have a nice day, bye.